decision to come to Houston. Why was this the location for you? I think it was a location for me because the way Coach Fritz and the staff made me feel at home. I feel like this is an area of the city as well. I could thrive outside of football. Um, and it fits a great culture. Coach Fritz, you know, he does stuff the right way. He, he has a culture, a winning culture as well. And I wanted to be a part of something, building something special. Um, you are known for your return game. Yep. That's something you expect to do. Mm -hmm. What about getting on the field more as a receiver? Do you, do you think that that's, you, you've got an inside track on that? Yeah, I think I think it would be expected. Um, that's what I've been trying to work on this whole offseason. You know, like me as a receiver, like I've I've done stuff at return, which doesn't really matter because it's a whole other season. Um, but I also want to prove myself as a positional player as a receiver, so just working my craft at that each and every day, trying to get better 1% every day. Tell me about Coach Sherman. Why is he such a good fit for this team? Yeah, I feel like he's a great fit because his knowledge, his football knowledge is radical, for one. Um, he brings an aspect to the receiver room. He brings a lot of energy to the receiver room that is needed, and he, he's disciplined. He's a disciplined coach. He, he's going to make sure the ball's always tucked properly. He's going to make sure we always catch with our eyes. Even when I don't catch with my eyes, I might um, fade my eyes away from the ball early. He's going to correct me on it. He's going to correct every little detail. He's a really detailed coach. You said he was a radical coach. What do you mean by that? Radical, which um, just amazing. Like um, I think more radical as in the details. Like I was saying, the details that every little thing he's going to correct. And every little thing, whether it's your your effort, whether it's you walking off the field after your possession, whether it's, like I said before, keeping the ball high and tight, he's he's tedious with his work. What have you worked on through this offseason to get ready specifically? What have you worked on to get ready for this new year? Um, I'll just say receiver training. A lot of receiver training, um, working routes, releases, second level releases, um, building a, that deep threat as well that um, might have not been displayed in my game before. You feel comfortable with Donovan? Yes. Donovan, yes, of course. Donovan is a great quarterback. He's a great guy. I love him, so I'm excited to see what he can do. Tell me, who is an under-the-radar guy in the receiver room? Anthony Ganji. I'm going to go Anthony Ganji. That's my guy. He um, taught me a lot. I teach him a lot. But each day he comes ready to work every single day. He puts the effort. He puts. He brings intensity to the room as well. He brings that aspect to the room that we really need. So Anthony Ganji for sure. He had a big spring game. Yes, he had a big spring game. Yeah, I was excited for him as well. So you scored as many touchdowns as Joseph Manjack threw touchdowns. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? <sighs> um, it made me feel a little, little, little ticked off, little mad, little angry for real because that's not that's not good. You know, I have a lot of higher self self expectations, so I know I should have had a way more touchdowns than he than he thrown. So. This year, I promise that won't happen again. I promise I'll have way more touchdowns than Joseph Manjack's throws. So, get them. How has the vibe changed on this team from a year ago now? A lot. It's, it's changed a lot, and for the better, actually. I feel like you know, we all come here every day ready to work. Uh, we all have a one and all get better every day mindset. So, the vibe has changed a lot, and it's changed for the better around here. If this team finished 28 on scoring last year, why is it going to be better this year? We wanted more this year. We're hungry. We know we know what to expect now. You know, I feel like first year going into the Big 12, we didn't have all the answers, all the all the right pieces. But this year, we're definitely ready, and we're more confident than ever. So we're coming in with a chip on our shoulder, and we will be ready. Okay. Talk to me about Derek Sherman. What does he bring to the table? He brings a lot to the table. That's my guy right there. Um, man, he just he tried to. Get us better every day, just giving us the game, the playbook. He simple, he bumps it down for us as, uh, as much so we can explain it, so we know it all. I'm sorry, but yeah, he um, he's a great guy, great dude off the field, off the coach, off the coaching staff. So I know I can call him each and every day whenever I have something wrong or something going on or whatever. He's just a great human being. Obviously, the guys gravitate towards him. It seems like all the receivers really love him. 
Because we have, we all, he makes sure we all have a love relationship with him, you know what I'm saying? I don't think he wants to ever end on any bad blood with anybody. So if he feels like it's something going on or something wrong, you feel me? He'll pull you to the side, make sure he get it right or whatever. So we all be on the same page because we need all, we all need one another in that room. So we have to be on the same page. Since last season, what have you been working on specifically in your game? Getting faster, getting my body right, uh, just becoming more healthier and be, getting my body right to go 12 plus weeks for my guys. When you say getting faster, is that working with Kurt Hester? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's one of the, he is the best in the game. Coach Kurt Hester is the best training training a uh, uh, um, trainer in the game. Mm -hmm. What is it that you've been working on? How do you get past you? Coach, guys, it's Coach Hester's secrets. You know, you work with Kurt Hester, but it's just really just running fast every day, just really going as fast as you can. You got to hit your top speed at least before five days. You can't go five days without without hitting your top speed, so you have to hit your top speed. So just running, just running every day. Really, we all are, but I'm going to give it to the young guys. Uh, Jacoby Young and Jay Sean Ridgel, for sure, are the off the radar guys to be looking forward to. Year. Awesome. So, tell me why Houston was the choice. Why did you decide to come here? Closer to home, a lot closer to home. I was six, seven hours away from my family um, when I was in Tulsa. And I know a lot of people here. I grew up with Boogie. That's Stephon Johnson. We grew up together. Um, I knew Everett had came from Tulsa. Uh, Marquise Shoulders, he had agreed to come from Tulsa. So it was just, I knew a lot of familiar faces. And it felt, really, it felt like home when I was talking to the coaches on my visit and just speaking to them through the recruiting process and the portal process. It felt like this was the place to be for me. How long was that process for you from the time you got in the portal until you made the decision to come here? Probably like a week total. Okay, uh, so pretty fast. Yeah, pretty fast. I think I hit the portal Monday. I don't know what day exactly, like date-wise, but it was Monday. It was a Monday morning. I hit the portal, and then five minutes later, I had schools calling me left and right, and it was it was ridiculous. I wasn't expecting that. Was it your plan to come back to Houston or the Houston area? If yes, you sir. Could? Oh, I wanted to play in Texas, no matter where it was. Uh, that was just a big, a big meaningful thing to me was to play college ball in Texas. I wanted to as a little kid and Houston gave me the opportunity and I wasn't going to pass up on it. Okay. Tell me what you have been working on specifically in your game in preparation for this year. Releasing at the line of scrimmage, uh, getting off the ball as quick as I can, uh, being decisive with my movements and understanding uh, DB's leverage and how I can use his leverage to my advantage. When you say getting off the ball quicker, is that work with Kurt Hester? Oh, yes, sir. Most definitely. He's all about explosion. Explosion, being explosive. Um, his thing is you have to reach top speed frequently. If you go a certain time without reaching top speed, you actually lose speed. And a lot of his workouts are plyometrics, which is going to help us be explosive a lot quicker movements. And that's been helping me get off the ball a lot better. His methods are a little different, right? Yes, sir. Was that something you embraced immediately, or you had to kind of, it took a few days? Oh, I embraced it immediately. Um, something my mom taught me as a kid was embrace change. Um, be comfortable being uncomfortable. So as soon as I came in, I knew what he was, he sounded amazing. He knows what he's talking about. He's a very smart man, and I have nothing but trust for him. So I wasn't going to try to do anything my way. It was, I'm going to I'm gonna buy in, buy into what he's selling me, and I'm going to give everything I got. Uh, tell me about Derek Sherman. What is, what is your relationship like with him? Oh man, he's he's, he's, a, he's a great he's a great man. I'm, he's amazing. Like I'm so close to him. Uh, I think he's one of the best coaches that I've had, and I haven't been around him for too long. Um, he just everything he do is meaningful. Um, he loves everybody in the room equally. It's just he's amazing. When I in my recruiting process, he checked on me every day. Um, to see how I was doing, see how my mom was doing, see how my family was doing, just to make sure that I wasn't stressing too much in the process. And when I got here, he just came with, I came in with open arms, and when I told him I committed, he screamed in the restaurant we was in, which is nothing but excitement. What restaurant were you in? We were at uh, Papa Cito's, the seafood. Okay. Why do guys, I, you kind of answered this, but why do you guys gravitate towards Derek Sherman? He just comes with a lot of energy, and he's big in his faith. A lot of us in the room, I think all of us in the room, are very, very heavily uh, faithful to God. And before every meeting, we pray together. 
Um, we talk about being family and being united, just not as a football team, but as brothers. And so him bringing that family side and just showing how much he cares about each of us, I think that gives us a lot of trust in him. Who on this team are you closest to, or two or three guys? Um, Marquise, for sure. Uh, we came from Tulsa together. Um, Boogie, I grew up with Boogie. Uh, and then his name's, he's a walker, his name's Dylan Cattle. Uh, we, we have, it's, it's crazy, we became friends playing the game online. We became friends playing the game online, and then who, how, do you, how do you figure we're playing football together at Houston? Hmm. That's crazy. Uh, who's an under-the-radar guy in the receiving room that's going to have a breakout here? Ooh. I don't know about under-the-radar. I think we all bring something to the table that's, you know, that's going to stand out. Who do fans not know that they're going to know then in a few months? I'll say a freshman, Kobe Young. He's explosive. He's quick. And we're going to, everybody in the room who's matured and actually played the game, we're all in his ear helping him be better and, you know, understand the game, bring more knowledge to his game. So I feel like he's definitely an underrated receiver is going to show what he can do. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. So you're one of the new guys. Yes, sir. What's it been like to be in here? Um, it's been great, you know, I'm from here, so it's been amazing coming back home, getting to see my family a lot more, and then coming coming to the Big 12 now, so it's a little more competition, and I'm excited for it. Was coming home to your family kind of the reason you chose Houston? Um, I mean, it made an easier decision, but really uh, it's a better conference than what I was coming from, um, so... I really wanted to come here and make a difference, but that also was a big, big influence. Tell me about Coach Sherman. What is it like from a player's point of view? Uh, he's a coach who, who is consistent every day. He stays on you every day. Um, he's always picking on something that you can get better at and helping us grow as a man on and off the field. Because, um, you know, coaches, some coaches, they just focus on the field but not all of them focus on off the field. I feel like he does a good job of doing both. I just asked Man Jack, who's the under the radar guy that we should be focused on? He said you. Okay. So from you, who do you think the under the radar guy is? Under the radar guy? As a wide receiver. As a wide receiver. Um, I mean, I like that answer too. Um, but I think I can also say uh, Devin Williams. I came from Tulsa with him. Yeah, I feel like he's a very underrated guy as well. Um, both of us didn't get to finish our full year last year. I feel like we had a lot more to show. And so I feel like you could see a lot of big things from him. Was the two of you coming here together, was that something you talked about? Actually, not at all. We really didn't talk about it um, until we both got into the portal. Um, because he, he had like a top three he was choosing between and and we both wasn't in the portal like at the same time. But when we first got, when we both got the offer, then we were like talking about it like this could really be a thing. And we had such a good connection at Tulsa, so it came true. What do you think of really as a head coach? Coach Fritz? Yeah, yeah Coach Fritz, he's like a great coach. Um, I've seen, uh, like, I've had, what, now three head coaches in um, college. Uh, he's a very down-to-earth coach. Um, very, uh, he brings guys in, like, to speak to the team and stuff like that. That helps us grow as uh, people off the field. I feel like that's very important for us. And he's just a, he's just a good guy. I like him. Okay. What in your game have you been working on? this off season to improve season. Um, really like the top of my routes. Um, I feel like sometimes last year I wasn't as precise at the top of my routes and clean and fundamental. Really focusing focusing on technique and while just trying to maintain my speed and stay fast. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.
So Joseph, what has changed from last year to this year? Uh, pretty much almost everything. We have a whole new team, whole new system, whole new coaching staff. A lot's changed, but um, the Cougs are still going to be the Cougs at the end of the day. What specifically is different? What specifically what? Is different than last year. Um, I mean, we have one returning starting lineman last year. Uh, Donovan Smith is back. Our running backs are back. Uh, a couple receivers left. But we have a, some guys that are coming back. Some younger guys are stepping up. And defense. We have a lot of new guys from the defense. Uh, a few returning starters, but you know, a lot of new guys in terms of players. Almost every coach is gone from last year, besides Coach Nagavi, our O-line coach. Uh, it's just brand new everything, almost. You know, pretty, pretty low in scoring last year. Why is it going to be different with this team? Uh, our coaching staff, our offensive coordinator, and coaches all across the board on the offense, they have a completely different plan for all of us. They're working with us, not trying to just do their own system. They're trying to figure out what works for us and for the team and for them. So, you know, they're figuring us out just like we try to figure them out, and it's getting pieced together. What about Coach Sherman? What do you, what do you think about him, and what does he bring to the table? He's a good dude, man. I can talk to him. Like, if I ever need some advice outside of football, he's just always a mentor there that I can always rely on. And uh, as a coach, he's, he's great at that as well, you know. But it's bigger than football, and that's what I appreciate him for. What, um, what do you mean bigger than football? It's talking about your life. And like relations, relationships, like, uh, you know, you, football can be over tomorrow. Football can be over in 20 years. You never really know when it's over, but these relationships you have last for a lifetime, and so that's something that I appreciate, I value a lot uh, coming in every single day with these guys. From last year to now, what have you worked on specifically individually? Uh, uh, with this new system, I've been trying to just focus on what I need to do every single play instead of worrying about if somebody has to block or run this route. I'm trying to figure out what I have to do still, you know, with the new system and new verbiage and vocab. Uh, it's, it's been a grind to try to figure out what exactly I need to do. So just focus on what I need to do in terms of the play uh, is what I've really been working on. Give me an under the radar guy in the wide receiver room. Who people not know about? Marquis Shoulders. Okay. Uh, I don't know how much people know of him coming from Tulsa, so he's a new receiver in our room, but I'd say he's probably going to be the under the ra radar that catches a lot of people's eyes this year. And uh, with the coaching change, gloves? No, gloves? sir. Oh. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> I really want to be the guy that brings that story. I really think that that would be pretty good for us. Awesome.